I would have never thought, even, you know, even 15 years ago, if somebody had told me that I'm going to be performing on a Stradivari, I would have just laughed, you know. It's such a pie in the sky. But now that it's, you know, there, it's, I, I take it very welcome, <laughs> yeah. It was purchased um, earlier this year by the ACO's instrument fund, and this is the first instrument to be purchased by it. So there's no better way of launching an instrument fund than with a Stradivarius violin. Everybody knows the name of Stradivarius. So many times when you walk on a street and you people see a violin case on it, they say, what's that, a violin? Is it the Stradivarius? And I can't really believe it that now I'm sort of saying, hmm, maybe. <laughs> Antonio Stradivari was a violin maker in Cremona. Uh, the very first violin makers were the Amati family. And I think he learned probably from the Amati family. And he continued working all the way through his old age, which was he, he lived, I think, till 92. Incredibly old for, for 18th century. And, um, and he worked really hard to the end of his, his life. And this violin actually is from, from his later years. He was about 80 when this violin was made. Well, Stradivarius is it's like the epitome of excellence in in any handcraft, I think, but especially in violin making. He worked so hard, and um, he had he made so many instruments, and he was very famous on his own lifetime already. And what is very interesting about Stradivari violins are that they have a very distinct sound. They have that bright brilliance in the sound, and this violin is not an exception. It does have a, this, this quite cutting sound that, especially you notice it when you go to a bigger concert hall, uh, you realize how the sound really carries. But at the same time, it's got a real warmth to the sound. Um, if you compare it with other uh, lot of violins, they're violins that are sound darker. That is, for example, the Guarneri del Gesù that Richard plays. And this one is more a bright violin, so you could call it more like the soprano of a violin. There is a real fascination about, about these instruments and you think about the wars that they have seen, you think about the, you think about, you know, the attics that they've been hidden in and, and, and there's something very, very sort of humbling for a musician to be amongst such a line of history. In a short time of my life, I get to play this, which is amazing because this violin has, has survived so many generations and it will survive us all too. <laughs> 